Hello and welcome to our program Where God Weeps, a program where we talk about the situation of the suffering church around the world. The Maronite Church is an Eastern Rite within the Catholic Church and spread worldwide, but within the Holy Land its numbers are small, only about 12,000. Notwithstanding this small number, the Church plays an important role of reconciliation. To tell us more, it is my great privilege to welcome His Excellency Archbishop Musa El Haag, the Archbishop of the Haifa and the Holy Land. Your Excellency, thank you for being with us here today in our program. And thank you uh, for giving me this uh, occasion to, uh, to, to be in show with you. Your Excellency, the Holy Land, as we know, is struggling in terms of the growth of Christians, the presence of Christians there. How would you describe the situation of Christians today in the Holy Land? The number now of the Christians is between Israel and uh, Palestine about 2,000 to 200,000 only. That means 2% of the population. Uh, 60, 60 years ago, we were about 20, 25 or more, but because of the, to say the, the emigration. emigration of the war, of the conflicts in this land, the Christians leave and they went uh, to, the, to the west, to the west, to America or to other uh, countries. How do you, for example, a young family comes to you and they say, Father, we are in a situation of conflict, of war. Do you say, it's okay, you go? Or do you say, look, we need you in the Holy Land. Please stay in the Holy Land as a sign, as a witness. Personally, I said to them, we have a mission to stay in our land. If there are more difficulties, we can resolve the, this by faith, by have a good, uh, how to say, will to stay here and we are beside you and we will help you. For this now, we are searching to have a big land, to make a construction, a small village or a big village to these. If the government will allow us to have the permit to construct like they are doing them for the, their people, for the Jewish people who comes from all over the world. And we have the land but we are afraid that the government will give not us the permit. For this now, the immigration stopped. But for the future, yes. we need the help of the church. The universal the of the church. church. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. the opinion on the, to, to be beside us, like Vatican and all the other Christians, to help us to be one uh, in power, to have what we, we are uh, uh, projecting to, to make. Do you find yourself as Christians caught on one hand between the radical Jewish community and on the other side the radical uh, Muslim community and how do are you are you a bridge between those or how do you how do you manage your situation being persecuted almost from both sides? I think if we live uh, the what Jesus Christ said to us you are the salt of the, the, the land, huh? mm. and you are the light, and you are uh, making your uh, vocation as a good Christian. You will, you will uh, stay. You will be uh, strong, and you will not be torn apart for this or them. We are in the middle, and we show them that it's our way. It is the safe way. It's the truth. For that, if we will be extremist uh, with the Muslims and with Jewish, uh, we can't live. We have to uh, be a good Christian in the middle, and uh, our, our, our vocation is to be a witness of Jesus Christ, a witness 
of the the teaching the teaching of Jesus Christ and the gospel on the, on, on the church for this I think that the extremists will not be uh, and take the power uh, by the Muslims or by the Jews because uh, the, the, most of the people, Muslims or Jews, are moderate, yes. are a good, a good man. And uh, this is our vocation, to be there and to, to witness for Jesus Christ, for the cross, for uh, our faith. Yes. Otherwise, we have to go, and if we go, there will be a darkness in the, yes. Uh, yes. In, in the East. And the, and the Christians, as you say, not only do they make the bridge, but they also act like a pillow, a buffer between mm -hmm. the two mm -hmm. communities. Yes. And without the Christians, then there's only the, 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 the conflict. The conflict, between the conflict them. That remains between them. How would you say the Christians are discriminated against? Or what would you say is, I don't know whether you would call it persecution or discrimination, but let's say we say discrimination. What would be discrimination that Christians would suffer on a day-to-day -day life? Uh, for example, in Israel, there is a discrimination. I'll give you an example. If we are in the airport, airport of Ben Gurion, the Christian is questioned and uh, how to say uh, searched, searched uh, more than the others mm. in the other community, the big communities in Israel, like Jews or others. Uh, the same is for the checkpoints. At the same time, we have uh, a high post in Israel. For example, the measure of the court in Israel is Maronite. But, and uh, discriminate, uh, for example, uh, a Christian or Maronite can't be, be a, a pilot in, in Israel. Cannot. Cannot be a pilot. Uh, the posts are for them, okay. not for us. Uh, discrimination or checkpoints, if you are Christian, a priest or nun or religious, and they put you at a part, and they uh, took your passport for one hour, two hours, three hours, without uh, without explanation. Why, without explanation. And after they said, we have to check your, uh, your luggage, piece by piece, piece by piece. And this is a discrimination, a big one. And they they don't uh, discover or see anything dangerous like weapons or others. To, to enter, of course. because it's our vocation. We we don't need we 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 don't made this uh, ways of course. or to weapons or not. Is it because you by the Jewish community you're perceived as Arabs, and by the Arab community, the Palestinian community, you're viewed as Christians, and therefore, so you have the problem from both sides. Right. Mm. We are persecuted by the Muslims. How to say three, four, or five percent, and by Israeli uh, more than. 20 or 30 percent. Uh, I don't know why, because we are Christians. Mm. And we are happy to be Christian and to be there and to be persecuted, because this is Jesus Christ. Mm. He, uh, he said to us, you will be persecuted like me. Yeah. For that, we, uh, we have to support and to be, uh, how to say, proud and to be strength if even we are persecuted. Has this, the Israeli government has built this wall, this wall which is at some points eight meters high, dividing, dividing the country and often dividing Christian communities. Has this caused even further problems? I understand, for example, some Christians cannot go even for holy, uh, holy celebrations at Christmas because of the checkpoints and all the problems of getting to the other side. Yes, I met uh, Christians in Bethlehem, in Beth Sahur and in the zone, uh, they are very, very, not angry, they, are very, they suffered so much because if one uh, man wants to come to Jerusalem, he has to make a permit. And this permit, he has to wait for two or three weeks. And they give them the permit for one day or two days, not more. This is a big dis discrimination. And the situation now in the West Bank is very bad economically and politically and uh, because there are parents on the other side. Yes. Uh, um, the wall is like, a, how to say, a bridge, not a bridge, a, a, a barrier, a, a barrier, obstacle mm. between them. For this, the, the young men in Bethlehem 
and in the other side of uh, they are leaving now to, to 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 America and to Europe because they can't they see no future no future and no open uh, roads for them for the for their parents relatives they can they say I have to to go um, I don't know if this is the aim of the government of Israel I don't know but why they are doing this against them they don't uh, have army weapons or nothing why they don't want the Christians? It's a big question. Mm. And uh, two days ago, I, I read that Moshe Arendt, the former, uh, he said, why this shame politic against Christian? What they are doing with the Christian? They are, uh, they have... Uh, you are citizens like any other citizens. Citizens, and they have uh, good ideas, uh, good ideas, and we can, uh, we can live uh, in peace with them. Yes. Why? Why this politic? This another uh, another big question from uh, from him. Yes. He has 90 years old. He is not a, a young. Your Excellency, we're going to take a break, and we're going to watch a short report about the situation of Christians behind the wall. I was born here in Bethlehem. My father was born in Bethlehem. It's been, it means a lot for me to be born in the, in the city of David, in, the, in Bethlehem, the place of where Jesus was born. I don't like to, to leave my country, because all my, my father's land, my houses, and my family are here. He told us, my father, look, if you want to live in this country, this is the country of problems because this is a small area, and everyone is fighting for this area. But we look forward always on the hope and to have a better situation and better times, not for us only, for the time of our children. My, my son is telling me, you have seen something in your life. You have been to Lebanon, you have been to the Syria, you have been to it was open, but now what we have seen, Father? We see the wall that has been built by Israel to separate the Palestinian territories from Israel uh, stretching in front of us here. This part of it, a eight, nine meter high concrete wall. Other parts of it are a road and fence uh, system. I understand the need of security for Israel. I understand that. Uh, the wall is not a solution. It's all creating more, more anger, more frustration. So it is a punishment and a shame. I know there's a very, very strong feeling of, particularly on the matter of freedom of movement, which has got to be one of the most difficult things to cope with if you cannot move about freely from place to place. This can leave you very quickly feeling that you are living in a kind of prison. More than 60 or 70 percent of the people who are living here, they cannot go out from, from town. They cannot move without crossing the border. I can go from here to my workers in Bet Sahur. This is a small village of the shepherds. I can go to Bet Jala, even to go to the Palestinian territory. Let us say Jericho is with the Palestinian territory. It's very difficult. We live five minutes actually from Jerusalem and we cannot arrive to Jerusalem. And if a tourist come here, can pass easily with his passport. But for us, we, are, we cannot pass easily. It's not easy life. We are treated like a terrorist. Wall means no communication. Wall means I don't want to see you to understand. For us, it is a wrong step. You cannot separate the the Palestinian people with a wall? Well, it's not difficult to look at the West Bank and to see there is no future. The situation is not tragic. It's more than that. Walls never bring peace. They bring more frustrations, bitterness, hatred, they create ghettos. These are the walls.
Christian of Bethlehem, they live only from tourism. So if the political situation is calm uh, and we have pilgrims, they can live, they can work, they can sell what they do as a souvenir. If the political situation is, is, is bad, if nobody comes to Bethlehem because they are afraid, because there is no peace, these people suffer and suffer and suffer. I would say we have about between 55 to 65 percent of unemployment in the city of Bethlehem. 65 percent live below poverty line, which is two dollars per day per person. And according to the UN, 50 percent of the Palestinian people suffer from malnutrition, especially the past year due to the boycott of the uh, Palestinian Authority. So many, many places, as you see, closed for many years. And this is something bad. We are near the Church of Nativity. No one can believe that these stores closed, no work. All my family left this country. We are eight, five boys, three girls. I'm the only one who remain here with my wife, my son. All the brothers leave, they are living in the States. They left from the first intifada and some before because of situation. If we still have people here, it's thanks to the help of many, many of our church in the world, thanks to many Catholic organizations. We pray for them, we ask them not to forget the Holy Land, not to forget the Christians, the families who are still here, to give them hope, to give them work, to give them dignity. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our program, Where God Weeps. We're here with His Excellency Archbishop Musa El Haag, the Maronite Archbishop of Haifa and the Holy Land. Your Excellency, thank you. Um, Your Excellency, we've been talking a little bit about the situation of Christians in the Holy Land. The Maronite Church is, and is working, as you said, as a bridge between East and West and developing specific programs. For, for example, one such program is called Encounter, which is a program of dialogue between yes. the different communities. Can you tell us uh, what is the idea behind this program and what is the success? Do you see uh, young people meeting in this and having a good place to, to dialogue? My predecessor, uh, Paul Sayah, he is now the, uh, the patriarch, patriarchal vicar with the patriarch. He uh, has a land and he constructed there a center, uh, a shepherd, a good shepherd, his name. And this center is to uh, make a dialogue between Christians and Jews and Muslims. The center now, he, uh, at the um, half of uh, the construction and the, the Mount of Carmel. The village, his name is uh, Isfia, and now we are going to continue this center and to inaugurate uh, this one by one year from, from now. In one year. In one year. Mm -hmm. And this uh, center is very important, especially now, to make a dialogue between religions and Confessions, yes. confessions, and we hope that we will have a course, a congress, a meetings for all the youth to uh, to understand each other. If we understand you, you understand me. We will be very uh, close, and we will uh, we will live like brothers, not other, but brother. We have to. Uh, put the B, huh? mm. not others, uh, but, brothers but brothers between us. Yes. And for this, we are uh, taking our role that we are bridge in, in this center. Mm. And we, uh, I want to, th uh, to thank all the organizations, Catholic organizations from Germany, from Italy, from all over the world. They are helping us, they give us money to continue this 
center, he will be, be a big one. Uh, he will be the aim of this center is the interreligious dialogue between us. Your Excellency, we've spoken now about the decline of Christians uh, by, uh, over the years, uh, over 60 years, from 75% now to less than 20%, I think. We've spoken about uh, the question of the wall and, and the problems for the Christians. Would you say that the West has been silent to the situation of Christians in the Holy Land? I think as government, yeah, they are silent. As people, I think that they uh, feel, they feel with us and they understand our cause and our problems and they they want to to help us but the government the government the heads i think they are they don't uh, feel like us or like the others what is our need and you speak about the wall uh, for example the, the wall in kremizan if you know in bethlehem is going now to divide two uh, big monasteries between sisters of uh, Salesian sisters and the, the brothers. So the, brother. the wall will go right through yeah. the middle of the communities? Uh, he has to surround from three sides all the convents and they uh, leave for them only one road. But uh, is going to divide the people from the monastery, yes. the two monasteries. And we, we were there and we see it's, it's, it's very, very sad huh, if, we, if we know. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why they are making this one. It's against Christians, against um, religious, against monasteries. And against the people in the area. The people in the area. They yeah. suffer. What can we do as the universal church? How can we help the yes. Maronite church, the Christians of the Holy Land? We don't have schools. We don't have hospitals. Only we are going now to have this center, the Good Shepherd. But it's not enough. It's not enough. We need schools. We need to find a new parishes in some, some big cities in Jerusalem, in the north, not in Jerusalem, in the north of Israel, we have, for example, 50 or 60 fami uh, families one night, and we don't have now the possibility to build a church for them. We have a priest, he goes and he says the mass by the, in the home, huh? yes. at the home. But we need to uh, have a new parish there. And we need to build a new village, a small village, for the young Lebanese, uh, those they live, they left Lebanon in 2000, and now they have uh, six, uh, 26 years old or 30 years old, and they don't think that they are going, coming back, going back to Lebanon if we will have a peace. Uh, for them, and I am now projecting something for them, to, to be united, to be a Christian, and to be uh, each of, uh, with them, between them, like a community. So you can get the permissions. You can get the permissions to build the schools. Yes. You can get the permission to build the churches. It's just a question of the financial support. Financial support we need. Now we have a small, a small uh, king, uh, king, kindergarten only, uh, for example, in Jish, in the north and one was in Haifa, but not more than, we want to... Uh, to make it, to expand. Expand this. And we have, uh, for example, our parish in Haifa is among a, a small quarter, quarter and there. Uh, we need to uh, make biggest. Yes. Uh, and to clean all over and to have a parking and to have like... A, to make to it say, suitable for the people to come. Yes, yes. Parish center for them, we have 3,000 and a half in Haifa, but we don't have possibility to, to have a new church yes. to build because we don't have a, a land yes. because in the old city of Haifa. And for this, uh, I, I am writing now to the organizations how they can help us uh, in accord with the Vatican with our, uh, to, say, to say, nonce apostolic. Your apostolic, the apostolic. nuncio. The yeah, nuncio, nuncio apostolico yes. in Terra Santa. And we are working, uh, making a good work with them to help uh, all the Christians and all the people, especially uh, our, uh, the Maronite uh, community in the Holy Land. Your Excellency, thank you very much for having been with us today in our program. Thank you, and excuse my English because no, I have to practice more and more. It was perfect. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having been with us today in our program. And if you'd like to know more about how you might be able to help the Christians in the Holy Land, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.